Unlike succinylcholine, where you start to reliably have return of muscle function around five to seven minutes, the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers tend to last quite a bit longer on the order of 30 to 60 minutes or even longer for some of the long acting ones. Therefore, it's important for us to be able to monitor the effects of our um, neuromuscular blockade. Paralysis is often um, intentional to facilitate surgical conditions, so we need to know how, how much of a neuromuscular block someone has um, in order to make a decision about redosing. So typically we use the train of four, which is a type of nerve stimulation pattern um, that I'll show you. Essentially, you'll put your nerve stimulator on a particular nerve and stimulate one, two, three, four times. And then you'll look at your muscle response from a muscle that's supplied by that nerve and you'll see some type of muscle contraction. Say these are all going to be the same height in someone who has not received a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. What will happen with your non-depolarizing blocker is you'll still give your four stimulations and your twitch height will go from full to decreasing with every subsequent twitch. This pattern that you see is called fade. And we can measure the height of this first twitch compared to the height of this last twitch to tell us what our train of four ratio is. So let's say that this last twitch was 25% of the height of the first one, so our train of four ratio would be 0 0.25. If you give even more of your neuromuscular blocker, we'll do our four bouts of stimulation here, you'll have a single twitch height, which might even start to decrease or will start to decrease. Maybe your second twitch is even smaller, and then there will be no response here. So here you can't even calculate a train of four. Instead, you would just say that you have a train of four count of only two. So your train of four ratio is not applicable, but your train of four um, count or number of twitches is only two. In case you're interested, the train of four is two hertz, so it takes two seconds to get four of these stimulations. Each individual stim is 100 milliseconds, and the strength is typically 30 to 70 milliamps, whatever you need um, to actually cause uh, a visual twitch, and then you usually stim, uh, stimulate at a little bit of a higher current. The two nerve monitoring sites that you're most likely to see are with the ulnar nerve and the muscle group you're watching then is the adductor pollicis, so contraction of the thumb, and the facial nerve for stimulation. And here you're looking at the response of a muscle called the corrugator supercilii. Corrugator super cilii. This is the muscle that causes you to furrow your brow or sort of give you the vertical lines in the center of your forehead. So angry eyebrow and um, the vertical lines. The response of these two muscle groups is actually different to the neuromuscular blocker. The adductor pollicis is quite sensitive to the effects of your neuromuscular block. So you don't need as much of a neuromuscular block to see decrease in the muscle function of the adductor pollicis compared to the corrugator supercilii is relatively resistant. So if you test the corrugator supercilii, and it looks like it has normal function or 
you know, a train of four um, close to one, basically here. That doesn't mean that the function of your adductor pollicis muscle is going to be normal. And therefore, we actually look for the adductor pollicis muscle function to return to a train of four of 0.9 to say that you are adequately reversed. I'll put that here actually. So at a train of four of 0 0.9, um, your function is that you are adequately reversed, which means that you're no longer at risk for aspiration. And things like visual symptoms, which happen when you have any degree of weakness are gone. So your vision should be back to normal. Perhaps surprisingly, at a train of four of 0 0.9, you still have 70% of your acetylcholine receptors occupied. This means that you can have 50, 60% of the acetylcholine receptors occupied before you even start to see any decrease in muscle function. Obviously here you'll have four twitches because your train of four is 0.9. If you have 85% of your acetylcholine receptors occupied, that generally corresponds to having four twitches still, but a train of four of around 0.5. And here your muscles that prevent uh, aspiration are still not fully functional. Um, but you could probably do a five second head lift. So although you may look strong in that you can lift your head up for five seconds, uh, that doesn't mean that you're um, safe and um, will not have a risk for aspiration. At 90% acetylcholine receptor occupation, you'll have only one twitch typically, therefore you can't calculate a train of four ratio. And um, generally this is good for surgical conditions. So this is very good at making sure that the patient will not be able to move. You may or may not just be starting to get some diaphragm movement back around this point. And then um, with 100% receptors occupied, you'll have no twitches, no train of four ratio can be calculated. And this is what you're going for for intubation. So you actually are giving quite a high dose of your uh, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers for intubation typically. In fact, you are usually giving two times the effective dose at producing 95% twitch height reduction. Just before we talk about dosing, I want to emphasize that there is no good clinical test for assessing the reversal of your neuromuscular blocker. The five second head lift is okay, but not really considering you need to be at a train of 4.9 to be safe. The best clinical test for um, adequate reversal of your neuromuscular blockade is um, biting a tongue depressor. But of course you can't do that while you are still intubated. So you would need to extubate someone to even do the test to tell you if it was safe to extubate them in the first place. So you really do need an objective measurement or a nerve stimulator to tell you um, how reversed the patient is and if it's safe to extubate. It also turns out that our ability to visually estimate fade is not very good. We can't tell the difference between a train of four of one and a train of four of, of 0.4. So let's say that this was actually 0 0.4. That will look the same as this train of four of one to us. So we need some type of device that can actually measure the amount of muscle movement that we have. So visual est for train of four. not accurate. For this range of train of four, 0 0.4 to one, which is unfortunate because this is, this is really where you want to know. Um, so for example, this patient here who can do a five second head lift 
has a train of four of 0 0.5, this will actually look like um, like a train of four of one. All these twitches will appear to be the same height for you. And you'll see this person is able to do a five second head lift. So you may be falsely reassured that it's a good idea to extubate this patient. So you really should use some type of uh, muscle response sensor.